And she does look fantastic in 99% of the clothes on the planet. Mark. Hey, my friend. Uh, well, congratulations on the movie. Uh, what a beautiful movie to look at. The costumes were spectacular, especially the women's. Uh, and Margot Robbie, my God, she can wear anything. And she yes. looks spectacular, right? Um, she wears clothes well. <laughs> very, yeah. I want to talk about that red. Was it a skirt? That that red that red outfit. Um, I call it a play suit, um, okay. but it's uh, it's a red. Um, the top is a, is sort of a halter, and it's connected mm -hmm. to little top pants. Which in my my mind, it was like a a pair of, of shorts that you might wear underneath like a dancing costume. And she probably yeah. stole it and moved to L.A. and found that scarf that was the same color and tucked it into the shorts and added a little. There was a sarong that we use that um, just so she could have some movement and also like polished, put the outfit, made it, give it a, gave it a final touch. Yeah. I mean, the way she danced in it and the way it flowed, it was just like, wow, it was like yeah. artistry, you know? So you, you made the costume so that when she's moving, she can move, but also it's like flailing about, you know? Yes. Well, it was because, you know, it didn't, it happened because we were, we were all prepping on the Paramount lot and the choreographer studio who's the choreographer was Mandy Moore and they were working like there was maybe 200 yards from the costume shop. And so Margot worked diligently and was rehearsing her, the dances because she has a couple in the film um, like every day for, or almost every day for about five or six weeks. And she would come in and do her dance rehearsal. And then once they got it, she was also coming in once or twice a week for costume fittings. And we would do sort of hour, hour and a half chunks at a time because she had a lot of costume changes in the movie. And But it was really helpful to be able to de develop a few ideas for this opening concept or this opening, the concept for the opening costume and ha have her go over there with the prototype on and do the dance and see how it would work. And some things worked and some things didn't. I mean, it was not, that was not the first costume that we, um, like the first thing was sort of a, a skirt that had mo more movement in it but there the, then I watched the dance and I was like oh she needs to be in some sort of short something that kind of covers areas of hers that she can be free to dance and she because I knew there was going to be 300 background in that scene and so there was a lot of elements that influenced the design and the concept but um it was because we you know as a prepping all together, all under the same, in the same studio and at this historic lot, which just like kind of fed into the whole um, symbiosis of what we were doing. Like I was in a, we were, I was in the Edith Head building at the Paramount lot when I was prepping the film. So, but that's really close to where they had the choreography going on. And so it, that, it was a, it was a collaboration, but um it's only when I talk about it now, hopefully when, when I watched the movie, I wasn't thinking about that at all. I'm just yeah. thinking like, oh, she looks fantastic. And she does look fantastic in 99% of the clothes on the planet. You can put on her, put her in rags and she'll look good because of she the acting. Good. She, she brings it out through the acting. She, she wears clothes well. I got lucky, you know, every, all of the ladies in the movie were very statuesque, like Lily, who plays Lady Faye, is incredibly statuesque and has a dancer background also. And not that Margo does, just Margo just has poise and, you know, she's just magnificent. And um, Jean Smart is like, like built like a model. She's six, mm. almost six foot and just legs for days and just very statuesque as well. And so I got very lucky having three leading ladies that can wear clothes very well. And uh, for Margot's uh, outfit, she had to be strategic, right? Because the way she's moving, yes. she's pretty, but essentially got like really thin mm -hmm. threads yeah, coming we, down. We had a great cutter fitter, Dale Wibben, was who cut all of Margot's clothes. And then I had another team cutting. I was the Karine Arakian who did um, Lady Faye. And then we had another tailor working on Jean Smart's clothes. And so we were, we, um, but the cutter fitter is instrumental in like taking the design and making it so it works in the context of what she had to do in that. And Margot is also super smart and was like, well, 
in this particular movement that I'm doing, I might need some structure right here. And so it was a combination of, there's very little top stick, which I'm proud to say. It was mostly um, some boning done in the side of the, which is, um, you know, it's like a flexible, uh, it wasn't rigid boning like from a corset. It was more flexible boning that we could put in the, in the seam structure of the, the side seams. And that's what kind of bent it and held it into place. Ah, yeah, I was wondering, I'm like, wow, the movements and that outfit is just like spectacular to watch. It was like mesmerizing. Oh, good, good, good. <laughs> yes. Yeah, and well, the, and the sat, she, she really, I mean, because she knew she was wearing it and she rehearsed in a version of the costume, she could incorporate the movement of the, of the sarong with the dance. And so that, like I said, if it wasn't for Margot and Mandy, and everybody working in concert with one another, it wouldn't be what it is. And so I have everyone to thank for that success. Well, congratulations on top of the beautiful cinematography, the album yeah. just popped. So Good. congratulations on that. Thank you.